As we noted uh, a month ago, we're in season 16 of the Archaeology Cafe series. So welcome folks to our second uh, cafe in that, that series. And so we're down here in Tucson, um, the homeland of the Tonawatam and the Pascoyaki. And wherever you are, I, we reach out to a, all across the US in these presentations. Um, feel some gratitude and, and thankfulness for the uh, homeland of indigenous peoples that you're currently uh, on to this evening. So the, the theme for this year's um, cafes is actually a focus on human relationships. The, cap, the title of the program, Better For It, Research Conceived in Collaboration with Community, um, is the, it's, our, it's the full title and it's the theme that relates well with our um, strategic plan program here at uh, Archaeology Southwest, where we're focused on uh, collaborative research and relationships with tribes, with nation, uh, with indigenous nations. So um, we figured let's reach out to other folks who are trying to accomplish the same kinds of goals and let them share with this broad audience uh, their experiences, um, what was hard, what was, uh, what was came out uh, well uh, in the end and, and, and how can others learn from uh, the experience of our assembled uh, really diverse set of, of cafe talks this, this year. So uh, again, welcome. I uh, want to say thanks to our uh, uh, series sponsors, uh, Smith Living Trust. Thanks, Gene and Eldon, and thanks, Jay, for your support throughout this time. And uh, we're really eager to learn about the experiences of our two young gentlemen uh, tonight, um, both from Zuni Pueblo and Kevin Kuyati and James Otoli. Uh, have been with the Zuni Ancestral Lands Program for seven and six years, respectively. And we've been enjoying a little back and forth uh, repartee with them. And I think uh, you're going to enjoy tonight's talk. We're really impressed with these two young, young folks. And they've got some really, I think, uh, exciting things to share. The title of their pr presentation, Revitalizing Cultural Lifestyle Through Archaeological Preservation. Uh, Kevin and James, thank you so much. And uh, the show is yours. Make sure I get the mic going. Kishe, cut on down and out there. Yeah, cut on soon. The kin of Kia. But Kevin Kuya, to let you know, I'm not the Oyato Kia, could down and toa go out on Chatla. Like it, that's the non hook. Don't not leave Halon or eat you all there. I will ask you a kin in me. So, yeah, uh, hello, good evening. Uh, people far and far, near and far. Uh, my name is Kevin Kuyaiti. Uh, my, uh, my clans are son and child of corn. Uh, I am the program manager for the Ancestral Lands uh, Conservation Corps Zuni office. And uh, yeah, looking forward to sharing some of our insight on, on today's topic. And uh, yeah, I'll pass it on to uh, my colleague James here for his introduction. Thank you. College Beach, you could down College Beach, you go on Chatley. Ancestral Lands Conservation Corps, Ilapau, Econikea, in order to Dehua, you put to know. Good evening, everybody. My name is James Dolly. Um, my clients are Crow and Child of a Crow. Uh, I work with Ancestral Lands Conservation Corps. <clears throat> I'm the Historic Preservation Coordinator, the Zuni office. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for tuning in. And yeah, so um, we we were asked to um, share some perspective, uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen so that way y'all can to see the visual aid. And so, revitalizing a cultural lifestyle through archaeological preservation, um, it was. It was a unique uh, opportunity for both James and myself to share our perspective uh, in a profession that we we both are 
just coming to uh, know of. Uh, I say that because, uh, you know, going forward in, in our presentation, um, the Ancestral Lands Conservation Corps uh, was a program uh, developed back in uh, as early as, as 20, uh, 2008 uh, by two individuals. Uh, there probably were more if I, uh, I made, you know, miss some details, but Corey, Corey Trivio uh, and uh, Aaron Loudon in the Acoma Pueblo uh, had a conversation, uh, John, had others join uh, uh, the conversation later on and with this conversation came an idea. Uh, and so with the help of the Southwest Conservation Corps, um, shout out to y'all brothers and sisters, um, but yeah, with the help of this conservation corps who took us under our wing, uh, we, we learned the conservation work, uh, both in the administrative uh, and, and uh, on the field uh, and pro project realm. And so with that said, uh, 2016 was the introduction uh, of our, uh, our Ancestral Lands Conservation Corps Zuni office. I myself was uh, introduced uh, to the program uh, by then recruiter Ryan Aguilar. Uh, who, who told me uh, all I needed was a background in uh, camping and, and uh, willingness to work hard. And so, uh, yeah, both James and I were introduced uh, early in the 2016 year uh, with uh, the Southwest Conservation Corps. Um, yeah, uh, along with Ryan's colleague, James Him, uh, who were interns, um, back in 2016, uh, who brought this idea forth to our tribal council. Uh, and with many conversations, uh, the office was, was established. Uh, I, was, I was sent off to North Dakota. I like to, I like to share that story too often, um, but perhaps in a different manner. Uh, this this uh, conversation is based on the, the archeological uh, preservation of, of our work. Um, Within the, within the concentration of projects, we've uh, dabbled with fence building, uh, trail building. Uh, there's been uh, invasive species removal, uh, chainsaw operations. Uh, we've had global information system projects, uh, both for crews and, and IPs, uh, individual placements, uh, interns, uh, and those uh, both crews, uh, the crew-based system, as well as our interns, uh, have have a unique opportunity in partnering with many uh, many affiliates such as the National Park System, uh, Bureau of Land Management, uh, and various other organizations. And so, with with the overall background of the uh, the many projects and focus of the of the Conservation Corps, uh, we want to narrow down this this uh, perspective more so more towards the archaeological uh, side of things. Uh, both James and I are, are blessed to, to be a part of not only the, the Ancestral Lands Conservation Corps, um, but really, really cherish our background and the community uh, who, who we've, we've grown, grown a part of. Um, I mentioned in my introduction, Halona uh, Itiwana, now, now known today as the Pueblo of Zuni. Halona Itiwana is roughly translated to a middle anthill. Um, but it, it, in that sense, where we look to introduce a lot of the terminology, a, a lot of our perspective uh, in, in the archaeological and preservation sense. And with that said, you know, uh, I, I do respectfully uh, want to hold the notion of, um, of mentioning first and foremost that this information that uh, James and I will share on behalf of the uh, archaeological preservation side of things is a, co a colloquium of information brought to us by many ways, uh, elder teachings, stories, uh, you know, both community and, and culturally driven. And so it, it is with that uh, humbleness that I, 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 I must say that these words are, are, are shared to us by, by those before us. And so uh, with that, you know, I, I want to ask my colleague over here if you want to mention any highlights on history of ancestral lands. Um, yeah, so just like Kevin uh, mentioned earlier, we when we began here in Zuni office with Ryan and James, him, we were associated with as South, Southwest Conservation Corps uh, ancestral lands program. 
Um, but in 2021, last year, uh, we, us ancestral lands uh, have became our own conservation core. Um, so we don't really re heavily rely um, uh, so much with like Southwest Conservation Corps, um, but we still are affiliated and um, help helped by uh, supported by conservation legacy. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, these are some of our leaders to the bottom right corner in Zuni and a couple of photos here in, around Zuni. And so, um, yeah, we've really been uh, focusing a lot on uh, historic preservation uh, since the beginning. Um, started out at Chaco Canyon uh, with a one person, or a one crew. That was an eight eight person crew. Um, and uh, if we didn't mention earlier, right now we have four crews. One is a crew here at a local project. Three are camping crews um, doing various work, and then we have one. Um, one uh, crew that's really dedicated to historic preservation and we'll get to that later. But yeah, the projects here that we started with that really mean, um, really helped us gain uh, uh, a good reputation with uh, just partners and really established our preservation, uh, uh, I guess, work. <laughs> it, it started at Chaco Canyon, our Chaco Culture National Historic Park. Um, and when we worked on sites like Pueblo Bonito, um, Pueblo Alto, um, all and out, there's lots of different um, sites there within Chaco Coaches. So, um, lots of our crews have uh, studied our experience out there. Um, and going on to the next slide, uh, Aztec Ruins, one of my actually favorites, favorite sites to work at. Um, it, it, I was uh, there, stationed there for about summer to fall, saw seasons change. Um, worked with uh, Vern Hensler, uh, and 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 again, first and foremost, uh, with all the knowledge and and, and experience and share share stories, I'll be telling you all. Uh, it, it didn't really come from myself. I learned it from individuals working at different sites like Chaco, uh, Aztec here in uh, El Moro, and and so there's there's lots of other people involved to help me get to this point. But like going back to Aztec, <clears throat> the first photo um, is looking towards the north. And, and uh, these are our photos that were taken by crews, their members, their leaders, um, myself, Kevin. And um, uh, these are some members working, repointing the walls. Uh, how we, when, when we first started too, we only had um, you know, a, a project partner uh, have have stuff lined out for us, showed us how to repoint what what was um, what was needed and what was expected, um, and and a lot of, it 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 got us to um, got us to to really learn what 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 to do and how to do it. Because it's very tedious work. Um, it's not for everybody uh, as as far as like stabilization repointing. Um, you're staring at a wall. <laughs> most of the time plugging in mortar um but it's about the sites um it's the sites what 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 meanings there are what 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 it means it's not just only us but different people you know there's science, scientific research to be done there there's different tests that need to be done there to preserve it there's people like us trying to work conservation course uh, indigenous people. and so going to the to the right of the right of the photo um you'll see a roof a ceiling, ceiling roof, and that that's a that's a room at Aztec. That's called what they I, I believe the painted room, and it's so totally sealed off and uh and and re really maintained with as far as moisture and 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 what have you because uh everything in there is original. That's an original wall. I'm not too sure about the specific date that was all uh, constructed, but um, below that you can see um the same the same roof ceiling. Um, but there's plaster on it. Uh, there's plaster that's original plaster, I believe, white chipstone that covered it. And um, half of that is white on top half. Top half is that white chipstone that's plaster. The bottom half is, is a red. I'm not. I'm not sure what kind of um, soil or, or paint that is, but it, it's it's painted red, and that's all original. 
and, and places like that are, are really well maintained. And um, in, for our program, we're really trying to send out crews, send out members, leaders, um, who have you partners, whatever, to go and not really study, but learn how to preserve things, uh, such like uh, room sites like that. Um, and, and so, yeah, there's a couple more photos of um, Aztec, but going on to um, for the next slide. We have El Moro, um, El Moro, that's, that's uh, at Atina, the site up there. Um, not, that there's a crew I took to the right corner on top and uh, that's a log cabin too. So with preservation, we just, it's just not mortar. It's just not uh, ancestral sites like this. Uh, it's also like um, homesteaders. That was the Gary Head homestead in the El Mai Pais conservation area um, right off Highway 117. Um, yeah, we got to try to preserve that, uh, remove the bottom logs um, and everything. That was more of a reconstruction um, and one of very few that happened. Um, and we're glad to be a part of that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if any of uh, you all know, but uh, Al Williams, right? Al Williams uh, was there. He's a very uh, well-known um, uh, cabin restorator. Um, yeah. He uh, really, uh, really helped us um, learn how how to preserve log cabins like that. Um, give share, give him, give us some of his knowledge. Share, share what he had, uh, what he went through. But looking through to the bottom or in the middle first at the Al Moro site, um, you'll see that's a wall, and and that wall is right right below a trail, a trail that is compacted with soils and everything, heavily trafficked. And that wall recently had, a, was collapsed. It had a wall, it did collapse. Um, not the entire wall, but about a good half, or a good portion in the middle, um, it, it all collapsed. And uh, at El Moro, we had a couple of intern, IP interns, individual placement interns, um, help to really put that back together. Um, and, and it, it's very tedious work looking at old documents, not just most recent pictures, but back to like 1950s, we're looking through records and, and really uh, numbering the rocks. So that that wall is, isn't an um, updated wall of the a reconstruction of it, but um, that, yeah, that's a little bit of some information. Going down the Gila Cliff Dwellings, um, that's a site that took about four years to really have a, have a crew do some work there. Um, shout out to Ryan Aguilar, we're on here. Um, the, one of the, um, uh, well, I'd say founders of ALCC Zuni, but um, uh, yeah, him and Calvin Chamini, Steve Bauman, uh, really, it took, it takes some time to, um, to plan these projects. And so the Gila Cliff Dwellings was uh, a project I got to be a part of, one of the first crews to have do uh, preservation, um, project there in, in quite a while and really documented and I got the privilege of having the responsibility of documenting from MPS um, using their cameras, um, their papers. Uh, it was quite a lot finding soils um, to match the mortar. Um, inside it's a lot different. It's, it's not prone to any elements outside, weather, sun. So that was quite a challenge, but it was fun. Um, towards the corner, that's inside cave number three, I believe. I'll call number three, looking out. And so the um, other individuals working. Um, these, yeah, these, these four main um, sites is where we got most of our knowledge. You know? um, Gary Joe at a, and, and, and his team at Chaco Canyon to Bern Hensler, Ernest and Emerson at Aztec National, um, Aztec Ruins National Monument, which is, I, I, I try not to pronounce ruins because uh, we believe that, uh, uh, that they're still there. Um, ruins is a site that was really abandoned, but it, it wasn't really abandoned in, in for us in our beliefs. Um, so Aztec National Monument, um, El Moro, uh, Calvin Chamonix and their Vanishing Treasures um, crew, you know, Edwin, uh, Valentino, uh, Alex, Dennis, Steve, Joe. Rick, Joe, um, what Joe. have you, Josh, yeah, they, all, those, all those individuals really helped us, trained us to where we are now to help really um, give us give us 
the ability to train our own folks ourselves now instead of really going out and asking for that help. Um, but other projects um, behind here in the picture is uh, the Lowry Pe at Lowry Peplo is the great Kiva uh, that's looking, I believe, like southeast towards Cortez. Um, but uh, like Casa Grande National Mon Monument, we had crews go there. Casa Mal Pais in Sprinterville, uh, Canyon of the Ancients, where, where uh, Lowry Pueblo is located. Friends of Cedar Mesa, um, Bears Ear, which is of now known as the Greater Bears Ears Partnership, um, Flagstaff Area Monuments that has Wapaki, uh, Lamaki, um, Walnut Canyon, uh, uh, Hovon Weep, which, you know, from Herschel to Herschel and his, his crew, we learned a lot from all these places, all these sites. Um, they, they really helped us get to where we are in our preservation um, era now. <laughs> um, yeah, Mesa Verde, Tuzi Group, Montezuma Castle, uh, and the Garrett Homestead and, and much, much more. It's, um, it's just, it was, it's great to really have these um, opportunities to work out. And then we did an abundance, abundance of work, not only work, but really research, you know, trainings, workshops. Um, we, we, we did a, a lot, um, not just uh, us, but, um, uh, but we, we helped others, uh, members, leaders gain more opportunities. Um, outside of the program and we, we we're still getting them more opportunities uh, with more projects and more partners that see them. Um, but yeah, like going through um, now this year, uh, I want to really um, not um, just highlight the, the uh, grant from a Getty grant that we got and we're partnered with with the University of Pennsylvania and uh, Flagstaff Area, Area Monuments. Um, and, and the crew that's really, that was dedicated for historic preservation, uh, crew 642 that I, I supervised um, was here for 12 weeks at Wapaki. Um, not just, just not doing uh, like stabilization work, repointing, backfilling, um, just, just um, regular maintenance, but they actually were, um, were, were really taught and, and given workshops, trainings uh, from the University of Pennsylvania, their, their um, Design school um, who is uh, the instructor is uh, Frank Matero um, and, and his team, Halim Rowe, John Finch. Um, you, um, they, I'm really glad that we got the opportunity to send a crew there because um, with the technology, the new ways to document, take photos, really line out all these rooms. Um, it, it takes a lot, you know. I, I mentioned to my my crew, a lot, a lot of the other crews. And even Kevin is that it took me um, about six years to really know a lot of what they're getting taught now, and and um, I can't I can't take that as like um, uh, jealousy or anything. I'm glad because uh, I want other people to like you know fill my spot. I want to try other things. I need to let other people have opportunities. So with Flagstaff Area Monuments and the Getty Grant, um, we, we were able to provide you know training um, and and some like certifications to really um, go towards preservation. And then we are, we're just glad to, to be a part of that. And it's for the next three years. So two more years after this and, and uh, yeah, it's just good things happening um, for preservation. And so the training, that it, the training just don't end there. Uh, we had trainings out at the Bears Ears um, area at uh, more, uh, more, more specific, the Grand Gulch area, uh, Junction Spring. Uh, we had a crew, Crew 641, go uh, on a backcountry hitch, what we call them. Um, they went into uh, the canyon, Bullet Canyon, the north side. And they, had, they went to Junction Spring for about six days. They were alongside um, Shauna, Shauna for, and, uh, with Woods Canyon Archaeological. Um, and, and her team, um, they really took, they really uh, helped, helped the crews uh, do condition assessments, you know, um, mapping skills, a lot of different things that that um, that uh, that our partners are 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 taught and they and they teach us. So it was it was a real honor to go have crews go down there twice. Um, the back countries, uh, the other the other back country hitch were was down to uh, Jail House Rock on the south side of the Black Canyon. They were they were there. Uh, just this past eight days, they just came back today, um, and that's 
the pictures, uh, the crew you will see right on top in the middle on the trainings and workshop. That's one of the crew members, Robert Riley, that's with two archaeologists down there. Um, well, I don't know what they are teaching him, but they got a lot of they got a lot of stuff. Um, and and so going down on to the to the left of that photo, um, that's Frank Montero from the University of Pennsylvania. Um, and me on, on the corner of that with the hat and gray jacket, um, MPS uh, Minty and uh, ants in the back. We're doing labs testing soils. That's a, that's a soil um, testing how much clay percentages in there, silt, sand. Um, on the bottom of that, we have Mackenzie uh, measuring a wall back in their back country hitch. Um, and Braden, our field supervisor on the bottom, um, doing the condition assessment, PJ, right next to Braden on the bottom. Um, Repointing Kayla on top of that, looking up at the alcove, and on the bottom right corner, we have MPS um, Evan from uh, uh, the Flagstaff Area Monuments, who actually was a student of Frank's. Um, it's just crazy how how these different paths or these different uh, people you meet all have something in connection, whether they know each other, and then that's that's where I'm we're, we're getting into, and, and we're grateful. But yeah, Evan really teaching uh, me and Ants at the bottom right corner, um, just, just some of his perspective on, on why things are need to be stabilized, what's causing that. And so um, that's, that's all these trainings and workshops are, 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 new, are new to us and, and we're getting more of, but we just can um, be more thankful and grateful for all these opportunities um, for our, our participants and our program. So um, yeah, but it all goes down to, yeah, like I said, Vanishing Treasures program. Steve Bauman and then Ryan Aguilar and uh, Calvin Chapman, all those to really help establish our office. Um, and all in all, it's all these projects and trainings and workshops, um, it's, um, a part of why we call this a lifestyle. Um, every day, every month, there's different walls, different rooms that need to be stabilized. Um, yeah. And um, this quote that, uh, came from, from one of the workshops that um, I, I was a part of from, from in Frank, uh, with Frank Matero and Fan, uh, the Flax Library Monument was, uh, he, no one could suppose who had, has not tried it, what an immense amount of time and care is needed to preserve things um, by Sir Finders Petrie, uh, the Hawara Journal, 1888. Um, it takes so much time to do, really do one wall it's really, um, if you really want it to 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 stay stay there long, um, they say there's there's lots of people who have heard like um, the mortar should stay in there about five years, ten years, what have you, whatever is mixed mortar. Um, but it all it depends on what how it's really applicated. Um, and what what mortars, what 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 additives are in there. So, um, it's very tedious work. You know, Chaco Canyon, you have all those little flat stones. Uh, what have you, um, real, real fine stones um, stacked right on top of each other. Um, it, it's, it's really uh, tedious doing those, those things, but it's, it's just not mortar too, um, but I'll let Kevin talk about why we consider archaeology preservation and lifestyle. Hi, Laco. Um, Hi, Laco James. And so, um, yeah, definitely putting in the mindset of, of how we how we developed uh, our our passion or, or really what, how we met the cause to pre to preserve these dwellings is hmm, where do I begin uh, aside from aside from the the technical aspect of preservation uh, Jane James was talking uh, more uh, mortar, mortar tucking, um, and, and and all those technical aspects. I myself am still a student uh, in in that uh, in that textbook realm, and so how I relate to preservation is really the culture, the the community we do in fact come from, and so uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, a lot of this information has been transferred down from generation to generation. 
uh, earlier, I share, I share with our, our, our colleagues uh, in, in our practice run of how uh, there is, there is a, a certain initiative, not only uh, taken here uh, in, in the program sense of, not, of James, myself, or Braden, uh, Arden, Ryan, several others within the Ancestral Lands Organization, taking the step up to obtain these roles uh, in order to lead uh, our offices uh, to, to such projects involving preservation and many others. Um, there's also an initiative to step on up culturally. And so I, I, I'm weary of, of sharing, you know, words such as fear or, or urgency uh, out of respect to, you know, the knowledge keepers. I don't want to cause uh, any, any shock and, and any, any worry uh, much more than we've already felt. Uh, in our time since. Uh, and so going, going forward, uh, you know, these words uh, are really uh, uh, a way for me to honor not only my knowledge, not only my, my, my willingness to pay attention, to be patient and obtain this knowledge, but really it, it's also to honor the elders, honor those who've gone beyond, honor those who've had a, a unique faith, uh, a similar faith in, in, in transferring knowledge, understanding to that next generation. And so a lot of our information, a lot of our understanding is oral. Um, you know, in today's world, we're, we're, we're definitely blessed to, to have recordings, uh, although I, I may not want to hear myself mumble a few times over and over again, yet it's recorded information for that next generation, right? And so I feel I find that these moments are 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 important and pivotal moments for folks like myself and James and, and you know the community that we do come from in, in highlighting voices in highlighting perspective. A lot of the information can only be understood, you know, if you are to be a part of the community. Yet, you know, I don't want to discourage anybody and say we're. We're withholding information, respectably so. There are certain there are certain tidbits that we we need to to uphold uh, for our village sake, and going beyond, you know, the songs, the prayers, the gestures, the phrases, the laughters, the energy, anything we happen to share with with each other, that's that's all to benefit us and our path in the present. And so, the oral history you know, continues with some adaptations such as the Zoom recordings, but also continues with our training such as James described earlier. You know, we're now, now we have an opportunity to not only preserve ancestral dwellings as a form of a profession, but really in the sense of honor, a lot of our community participants involved in the ancestral lands program have a unique chance to really reconnect with their potential ancestral lineage through these ancestral dwellings. And so it, it's quite, it's quite, you know, I want to, I don't want to say mind blowing, but it's, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's really out there to think that the same ancestral dwelling may have been built by, by our lineage. But that's the faith we, we carry through, through our stories, through our prayers, uh, through, you know, one such story is the migration. And so before I continue on to the next slide, I definitely want to highlight uh, the visual. Uh, Getty Epelous, uh painted this and quite the talent he is uh, of, of Chimik and Akedeh, or, or now known as Ribbon Falls, our place of emergence. And so I'm not gonna go into detail uh, on, the, on the, our story of emergence, because it's not of that time yet. Uh, and definitely want to respect that knowledge uh, uh, with, within, our, within our village. Uh, and, and so highlighting the, the visual once again, you see such images, you see such, you know, depiction of, of landscape, of, of, you know, routine perhaps, uh, tasks that needed to be done, visual aids such as uh, pictographs, there's there's handprints, there's dragonflies, you know, our lightning bolts, uh, lightning bolts. So symbolically, where we 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 speak that language as well. It's not only oral, but through symbols, there are certain distinctive meanings. 
and as as mentioned in in the meaning of different places we'll we'll also share to with you you know the the various sites that we we are honored to preserve uh, in our time so chimicana kedaya ribbon falls uh in the grand canyon is our place of emergence and beyond that that starts that starts our our journey and so with with the help of such symbols we're able to recognize, we're able to go back to such places through the, through the knowledge of our elders. We're, we, we can bring more understanding to, to such you know, depictions such as the rock art. We can bring more understanding of why, you know, why prehistoric corn is, is, is such a rarity and why we must, you know, cherish it and, and hold it with care in, in order for us to think about replanting a, a, an ancestral crop. Um, you know, we have, we, we hold such delicate remnants uh, so dear to us, not only in, in the archeological or preservation sense, but perhaps, you know, we're able to recognize the energy of, of such crafts, of such dwellings, of such art that is being depicted. And so, petroglyphs, artifacts, architecture, scientific research, all information left by the ancestors. What were they trying to say? What were they, what were they trying to record? You know, what, what were they trying to teach? Uh, and so James, both James and I have this unique opportunity to not only decipher, you know, a lot of these, this information, but through, again, through our trainings, we're able to, to share what we've come to know. May you, may you say that for me? Archeo astronomy. <laughs> Archeo astronomy. So I, I, there was a brief pause. I, I wanted to uh, acknowledge that, and there was there was no glitch in 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 uh, in our presentation. And so thank thank you for mentioning that phrase. And so ar archeo astronomy, it's definitely in my understanding, which is you know very little of it. It's definitely a part of the culture. I say very little of because there's there's definitely specific groups who obtain such information uh, of the cosmos, if you will. And so archaeo ar archaeo astronomy, you know, has been uh, has been mentioned quite too often in sites such as Chaco Canyon, uh, in the sense of ancestral dwellings built based on on reflection of the stars. And so through through symbols again and through knowledge of uh, from our from our elders, we we see such symbols, and we start to wonder: Is this this is this in in the Cosmo area? Is this uh, a map of some sort? Or well, what is what is this? Most most all most references will see this as a sundial of some sort. But two next to each other makes you wonder, correct? And so the in, the information is there, and, and I believe it's it's yeah, just in a way. A moment to discover in, in, in some senses. I'll, I'll elaborate on that uh, here, in, here in a bit. There's also uh, one of our crew members, uh, PJ Pisanto Lasio Jr., who's having a grand old time uh, checking out ancestral dwellings over at uh, Hovon Weep area. And so, archaeoastronomy not only ties in uh the stars but he also ties ties into a lot of our, our our songs and prayers a lot of references that we hold dear also uh goes in the directions and so with the within the language I, I, I want to try my best, although I'm mumbling my Zuni language right now. You know, it's with these opportunities that I get to not only practice, but I get to enhance uh, and really, really set forth the intention of my learning thus far. And so uh, I, I mentioned uh, in, in, in our language, uh, that the Zuni language in particular is a unique uh, is a unique dialect. I've, in my understanding, I've uh, it hasn't it hasn't 
it hasn't compared to any other language uh, within the Southwest region, nor any other languages, uh, at least at least to, to my knowledge. Um, English is the most common language used today, uh, and, and def definitely with the efforts of various programs uh, here in the community, uh, Zuni Youth in Enrichment Project, uh, ZECTEC, which is Zuni Center and development. And I'm not. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, yeah <laughs> definitely. With, with those entities where they're introducing uh, the Zuni language on, on many platforms, whether it's storybooks, uh, virtual platforms, even. Um, it's, it's, it's very precious and definitely looking at many ways to, to continue uh, on how we share our language. Songs and, 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 and prayers is how we, we, we often hear uh, from our elders, you know, the care they have within upholding that language. There's a crew over at the Navajo Dam, excited to come out the project. And yeah. with all that, um, it's a lot of our own culture beliefs um, as ALCC and Sister Lands Conservation Corps. Uh, we, me and Kevin can only speak on our beliefs, specifically Zuni, uh, we, but we have many other offices, you know, the Diné, um, Albuquerque, which, which there's a lot of uh, neighboring um, Pueblos um, people. I guess Leta, Santa Ana, um, and we have Akama that has an office, Hopi. Um, but for here in Zuni, you know, we're trying to bring it all back to our community and really um, um, share what we have to preserve um, our, our, our reservation and our land. Because um, I, I consider the whole Southwest, you know, from like Grand Canyon to maybe Texas, um, and uh, their surrounding areas uh, are really a, a whole archaeology, arch, arch site, archaeological site, um, because um, uh, these these ancestral people um, are our ancestors. They really went and walked all over um, this whole this whole area. They have evidence, their remnants everywhere, um, not just in you know these sites that are really well known. Um, there's small sites, lots of sites that that we really hold sacred. Um, and we, we just hold hold back and not share because there's a lot of you know things of significance um, that that we hold truly that we 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 sometimes don't know about either. Um, but like knowledge, you know, all our trainings, our workshop, and the experience, you know, going down in the Grand Canyon through folks, uh, younger people that are our Zuni Cocho Resource Enterprise Team, um, you know, they go down the Grand Canyon to Ribbon Falls, take people younger people um, and really experience where our migration story started. Um, and that's a part, that's one of the, that's Kevin's backpack actually on the left bottom corner next to the flag on, on, the, on the river, on the boat, on the river in the Grand Canyon. And then that's me when I was a lot younger <laughs> on the top, right? And in the um, middle, that's James Him, the first, the first historic preservation coordinator for uh, ALCC. Um, giving a presentation at El Moro. And, and so on the bottom right too, that's a photo, a photo back of the day of Zuni, Zuni uh, children. Um, and then just bringing it all back, you know, uh, the history of the stories, you know, uh, sharing it, pictures. Um, but uh, it, all, it all ties into the community. Uh, we have a lot here that we need to preserve too. Um, I feel like as a, as a program, we go out there to learn all these things, bring back. And it's just not, you know, preservation, uh, you know, like, like repointing, stabilization. Uh, preservation con, con, like consumes a lot of work. It's like trail work. We have a local project, Village of the Great Kivas, here um, in Zuni, by Lower Nutria, if, if anyone knows of that area. Um, there's a book by Frank H.H. H. Roberts of, of excavation there. But uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I was a part of the YCC crew here that Zectec here in Zuni sponsored in 2015. 
Um, we made a trail out there. And then five years later, now to 2022, uh, ALCC uh, crew is out there, youth crew, um, and sponsored by New Mexico YCC as well. We're very thankful because if there's a trail we have visitors, we really want to help preserve and, and slow down the weather, the weathering of the whole site. Um, we've had many of just different art. Uh, archaeologists uh, excavate and not document. Uh, it's next to a mountainside, so there's a lot of heavy runoff, water erosion, and we can only do so much to really slow it down. And so that's some of that like uh, knowledge experience that we're trying to bring back. And, and so, um, and stories, pictures, what have you, because um, we, we just want to learn and help bring it back. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, to, to share a bit on the reasonings why we consider archaeological preservation a lifestyle is again not to take not to go too deep into the technicals. Earlier this morning, I ha happened to walk down our, our highway, Highway 50D, uh, in the middle of our village. I was walking. I was walking west uh, as I uh, was late late for work, and James had to turn around to pick me up go to a site anyway um along that stretch of highway we have we have like i don't know a uh, 15 foot masonry wall and so it's 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 sites like that or just moments structures like that that really I, i'm just uh, i just happen i just can't help but admire because uh, of the energy i recognize that was embedded within that project or within that, you know, focus. And so considering that a lot of our preservation is around ancestral dwellings, I can't help but to again wonder who, who constructed that wall, who constructed that room for what purpose? Uh, you know, research can tell us uh, perhaps it was, it was a, a food storage. It was a living quarters. Uh, we found the hearth. This is where they cooked. Okay, so we know with that basic information, which is not basic at all, it tells us that there were occupants. It tells us that there were energy. That there was, that there was, you know, life. There, there was, there was everyday moments with within, you know, those those times. And so, whether it's plastering the wall, whether it's us, uh, you know, doing stone masonry, whether it's getting wood for Vegas or perhaps, you know, for firewood, whether it's uh, uh, creating terrace gardens, you know, all, all of that was, was a sense, energy and focus uh, from, from those ancestors for a specific purpose of living, of, of maintaining a lifestyle. And was it? Oh. That, that's pretty much it. Yeah, the end of our slides. Um, but that just to really reiterate our uh, lifestyle, we call it, we consider this a lifestyle because we're really preserving our language. Um, like stated in the in the previous um slide, um, it, it it's a really important necessity for our culture. Um, our language really is what it really makes our culture because we're so unique, and it's really like Kevin said, really it's not comparable to any other language that at least to our knowledge is out there. Um, and so like, yeah, preserving our languages, um, preserving our culture, our, by our prayers, our, our stories, what have you, all this is just a, a lifestyle that we, we, we didn't really realize and just to become accustomed to. Um, and we didn't realize that stabilization and, and preservation out, out and about throughout the Southwest really um, come to, to what, why it is a lifestyle. Yeah, this, that hope everybody did enjoy the um, presentation that we, me and Kevin, have um, provided, and um, yeah, that that this is the end of our presentation. Yeah, then um, I, I was mentioning to to our uh, uh, to our host of uh, going two hours, so I definitely we definitely want to hold some space for some question and answering. I did, did want to say that, you know, there's there's a lot more information to share with y'all, uh, not not to highlight my constant mumbling. However, just to, for me to, for us to explain the many reasonings why it takes, well, 
it, it's going to take longer than an hour. And definitely, again, I want to hold, hold some space for your, for your questions. And perhaps in, the, in that time, we can elaborate a bit of our insight and knowledge. And so with that said, I pass it on to uh, Linda or, or Bill to, yeah, yeah. to provide us some questions. Well, James and Kevin, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, maybe, can you stop sharing your screen? Oh yeah, well, no, well, you did already. Look at that. You're right on top of it. <laughs> um, I should turn my video on so people can see me. Thank you so much, guys. That was wonderful. Um, very interesting. And we do have some questions coming in. So uh, if, you, if you're willing, I'm gonna um, throw a few at you and ask you to um, address them a little bit. Um, I think one, the one I'd like to start with is, um, <clears throat> pardon me, but you know, what can non-native people do and how should we behave when visiting and helping out with stabilization on ancestral sites? Yeah, so, um, uh, this, I, I like to say, you know, just not not only to like non-natives visitors, but my my crews too, uh, my crew members, is that how how would you feel if uh, you know I went to your house or or your relative's house or 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 what have you, but a, a place that you you call significant um and and go around about you know um uh, without really permission or or really unrespectively. Um, how how would you feel if I walked on your couches or or what what have you you know take take something off of a lamp? But that's how I would reference it. This is like it, we're not trying to limit or or restrict anybody. It's just uh, it's just it's a site for everyone. Like I mentioned, not only natives but for for, for science mm -hmm. for for what have you. Um, but yeah, this respectively, just you know follow follow the signs. A lot of these sites have um policies, rules, signs up to say stay on trail. Um, if there's nothing noted and if you can go, but that, that's that's a little my insight on yeah. that. I think that's really good advice. Yeah, asking questions. So that, that yeah, appreciate appreciate you asking that question. Uh, and yeah, definitely uh, don't assume, don't assume that, you know, there's certain access points. There, don't assume that there's uh, one particular culture uh, invested in, in specific sites. And so, yeah, just, uh, you know, uh, in addition to uh, what James meant, uh, mentioned in, in what the knowledge we instill to our crews, uh, we also mentioned to have an open mind, have an open heart. Uh, and, you know, with, uh, with walking into uh, ancestral dwellings with a bit of care, uh, you know, uh, that, that's, that's, that's more, that, that's the least we can ask for. And definitely uh, your openness and, and, and perhaps uh, even your bravery to ask some questions uh, and knowing that there's there's certain information that may be without, uh, in all, all due respects, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to ask. Yeah, thank you. That's very good advice. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've had somebody ask, and I'm curious about this too, is what is your vision for your program? How, how would you like to see Ancestral Lands grow? What would you, what do you want it to become? Uh, you, that question will be here all night. <laughs> 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 but, but, I mean, as far as for me, you know, it, there's a lot that that can be done with with our program in the future, how we can help our community, help others. You know, how I see it is really being a part of our community um, and, and, you know, um, what we call is public public outreach, um, helping out, you know, just 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 having that presence almost, you know, um, we were still uh, we've been established for seven years, but just making that presence in that community, letting them know that we're we're here to help. And then because there's a lot of things, not just you know preservation wise, like I said, preservation all sorts of things environmentally. So we have, you know, uh drainages that need to be clean and stuff, what have you. But really, really um using all the knowledge that we gain from going out and using that all here locally, you know, we have one local two local projects right now, you know, one's another a fence project on the west side of the one, the other one is uh, a trail, trail slash preservation project at Village of the Great Kivas. And so really documenting to, documenting those two, uh, what work has been done um, before and after lots of pictures, you know, um, that, that's how I see it really, uh, having more opportunities and um, 
uh, yeah, having more opportunities for people to really join and, and get more opportunities because um, I want people to take my spot. I want to go other places, but um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as James mentioned, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take this question and, and speak for the next few hours if you let me, but uh, <laughs> I, I tend to stay, stay in the dream world uh, as I often reference here in the office. Um, you know, I mean, where do I start really? Farming, uh, training facility, uh, like I can go on and on, but really, realistically speaking, uh, is just continuous support. Uh, as a nonprofit, you know, we we uh, we essentially we we're, we we're building with what we have, and mm -hmm. I feel uh, as as an office, uh, we we can have the potential to be, you know, on on the grand scale, not not to say or, or showboat that in such a way, but to elevate our knowledge, elevate our, our, our professionalism, elevate our skill sets, uh, all all while encompassing. You know, leading our youth uh, back to ecological and cultural well-being. That's that's how I I, I see our program flourishing in, in many ways, not just financially, but the support of the community, the love we're we're instilling in each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. For me, that's that's my ancestral belief. Is is first acknowledging each other as as person, but also mm -hmm. willing willing to you know offer offer some aid in 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 a sense to build this community up, if you will. Yeah. No, yeah, I understand. Yeah. So um, do each of you have like a favorite place that you've worked or a place you feel particularly, you know, connected with? <laughs> Don't make us answer that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I say I have like a list of, uh, uh, of like, one a top two knee, I would say. <laughs> uh, but to make it short, you know, um, one and the number my number one most favorite site would be Aztec. Um, somehow, for some reason, mm. the project partner Vern Hensler um, was very great friends with my uh, late uncle Andrew Atoli, and I had no clue at all. So um, just to have that connection and, and just really hear from our elders of what that place is what it means what was what was done there um that's one of my most favorite sites but you know mm -hmm. it just goes down the list to like Chaco El Moro but um as far as like projects you know um Gila cliff buildings would be the my most um I guess the, the project I'm most proud to have been a part of because mm -hmm. uh, like I said I got a lot of responsibility really being trusted to document for the National Park Service and then and yeah um, that's that's my favorite site. I haven't been to all the sites. I mean, there's still a plethora of sites I would like to venture to. Uh, so I want to want to hold some a little bit of space. Um, but at the same time, I I will be biased and, and mention you know my one of my first sites I was stationed at, which is uh, El Moro Hesho uh, mm -hmm. And so not only the site, you know, uh, for me is unique. They have the eye loop the the switchbacks, the woodpecker rock, the honeymoon cave, I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the unique things about um, what I found about that site is the, the structures itself. So there's a north structure and a, and a south structure. And uh, to my understanding, El Moro uh, itself uh, was a trading center. Mm. It's got a spring there. It's got a, a history of, of camels. And But I do want to highlight the staff, and more, more in particular, mm -hmm. the Heritage Preservation Department. Calvin Chimony, uh, and, and yeah, his, his team uh, really inspired me uh, to, to continue not only this preservation sense, but culturally to take those initiatives to, to see what we can do to help our, 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 our community in, in uh, maintaining the knowledge uh, and, and even the skill sets. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we only talked about preservation, but there's farming that we haven't even tapped into. There's the, the initiatives like our, our Hopi office in, in the world for life that, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just all inspiring. Right. And so, you know, to, to want to, to continue in, in some sense, one fraction of our ancestral lineage, I hope we get to have more fractions added onto that. But, you know, James and I feel that we're, we're doing our part uh, and we're trying our best to do our part yet it is tiring you know it, it is it is uh discouraging at times when perhaps you, you you feel like you're the only one willing to preserve what's left and 
you, we tell ourselves, we encourage ourselves most often to, you know, not, not just seek that inspiration, re-inspiration, but really remind ourselves of the, the culture, the language, the prayers, the songs that we often recite, but um, may, may lose sight of. But mm-hmm. again, with, with this guy right next to me, he, he's, he's uh, the inspiration I need for that next day and that next day and that next day. And, and that's yeah. the only one person with, with the Zuni office. I haven't even mentioned the rest. So um, just want to give you a chance if, um, if you can share anything. What resources, I mean, we've got some people in the audience who are really interested in, in this program, very impressed with what you guys are doing and trying to do. What resources does your program need? I mean, what do you need people to give money? Do you need, I mean, what, what is it that your program needs? Is there any way other people can help you? Um, you know, a, a really tight knit family, family, not just like myself, but coming from our community, um, at least for myself, it can't really be specific. I mean, mm-hmm. if I if I do get specific, uh, it'll be like a Christmas list yeah. of, of stuff I never got. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just like you know, just 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 for myself, you know, um, anything we can pretty much get, you know, um, funding for projects, especially local projects, is something that you know we're really looking into and really. Mm-hmm. trying to get started with mm-hmm. because you know one of the only first local projects is village of Davey Kivos but you know other than funding you know there's 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 a bunch of different things you know like technologies like you know uh, Agisoft that that's the software that um is used to take pictures and mm-hmm. it makes it into a uh makes a, a you know a 3D uh, image into a 2D yeah. and um back to uh, uh I'm not sure how it is but with Frank Matero and, and his um, staff, you know, teaching us those things, you know, um, not only that, like our tools to help us in the field, the testing soils or, or measuring or taking photos, at least, you know, we run through cameras like crazy with scratches with uh, not not on a, a, a good amount of, uh, you know, hardware, software, you know, no storage to just keep our photos. There, there's so much things that, you know, it's on, it's on our list that we wish, you know, but uh, we're just grateful to, you know, get what we can. And it's only us to, you know, uh, uh, if we're able to, you know, get more staff, you know, we can we can have the ability to, you know, work through those things and provide for our troops. But by now, uh, right for right now, you know, we 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 we're appreciative of what we were given, you know. Um, uh, and so, yeah. you guys, you guys, I think I heard you say you are a five hundred one c three. Now, are you a nonprofit? Yes. Okay. So people could learn more about you online and yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. No. Well, I think with you two involved and everything you guys are doing, I think the program has um, a bright future. I really do. And there's a ton of, ton of kind comments saying, thank you so much. We're going to share those with you so you can see them, but it is um, about five after seven. And I promised I would wrap this up more or less in an hour. So we might have to have you come back and talk for another hour later. But I'm going to ask Bill to come back and let him wrap us up for the night and let you guys um, let you guys go home because it's getting late where you are. <laughs> of course, Bill. when I arrive, the train arrives at the same time. What, yeah. what, what else is new? But uh, I just sat back and enjoyed the energy that came out of the two of you, the, uh, the trajectory uh, and the concept of preservation as a lifestyle. Uh, that was really powerful talk and uh, thank you both so much and uh, we'll do what we can to put some information as to how people can get uh, follow uh, how to give uh, whether it's funds or or resources so uh, you you're very deserving and we're we're thankful for your uh, presence here tonight so thanks again folks and uh, see you all in a, in a month Thanks, James. Thanks, Kevin. Good night. Oh,